Good day, folks. People were asking more about the reactive capacitors for the um, capacitive power supply. So I'm going to show you more details of this. So here's the inverter connected to the battery. And my advice is if you're going to use an inverter for this kind of stuff, try and find the smallest inverter you can. Um, because the more fancy, the bigger the inverter, the whole point is you don't want to have like 5 to 10 watts of idle power because anything at all, more circuitry, low voltage indicators, USB chargers in the front, the, uh, the more bells and whistles the inverter has, the more power it's going to take to just idle. So you want to get yourself the most basic, smallest inverter you can because our goal is not to use too much trigger current. So with that said, I got my extension cord here, which is just a tap from the inverter. So one side of the AC is in um, series with the capacitor 1UF. It's a high voltage microwave capacitor because it should be an X-rated capacitor. Normal capacitors may not be handled the uh, transient spike so very important to have an x-rated capacitor or a very high voltage one such as a microwave capacitor for these kinds of projects here but with the math here at uh, 1 UF at 60 Hertz here this drops the current down to around 40 MA so that's reactive power not real power but it's still enough to drive certain things and it's a much better way to drop the current than using uh, coils and resistors and voltage regulators and all that sort of extra circuitry for all those losses that we have to pay for. So a very efficient way to just use the current we need without losing like 90% of it in the process just to limit the, the, the current at the device if you know what I'm saying. So with that said, the uh, reactive stage and the other side here of the wire connects right here and it connects into a regular AC to DC transformer and a little hint here is the reactive power works better with like um, inductive loads so not so good if you're gonna try and run real um, digital integrated circuit switching and that kind of thing of power supply so analog in other words real transformers is what this is more friendly with and this transformer here is an AC to DC traditional no no uh, switching nothing just the diode rectifier and filtering capacitor and the DC output here is what powers this little fan Bedini motor and I'm going to turn it on to show you guys so I'm turning the inverter on now and I'm going to start the Bedini here so that runs the Bedini no problem. Now this device here is like the fan version and I liked it and everything, but it's not that efficient in terms of, well, it works, but it always seems to want to take over 100 MAs if you let it. So me, it's always trying to figure out ways to limit the input current on this thing without sacrificing more current trying to do that, right? So right now it's in the mode of charging the battery. I could either run the lamp on it or it has little LEDs around there but we're gonna charge the battery here which is a dead 9 volt and I'm gonna turn the meter on here and I'm gonna show you how quickly the charge happens here but very little input reactive power only and yes, in theory, this would work off the 60 hertz. I don't recommend doing it, but... So 7.83 now. So we'll see if it climbs here. Seven point eight four. So it's not bad at all for what it is. And mind you, these are quote unquote non rechargeable batteries. Ha ha ha, yeah. These things, the Alkaline batteries love the uh, Bedini outputs. And you could hear the um, device tuning itself as the battery condition changes. 
See, 7.85 already. So the charge is happening pretty quick, folks. And it's very nice because I'm not using anything for my input. If I were to use anything like more than 100 MAs, the fan on here turns on. There's an automatic sensor. So once again, this is reactive power supply to drive the Bedini or other solid state generators, high voltage DC generators, anything you want to drive. It's not for every devices, but our kind of projects where we're trying to limit the current. You know, I was using a pulse switch for some of my projects to bring it down to like 40 MA. This is a more simple alternative to that and you get the same results. So 7.86 now. And this stores as real usable power, folks. You could either charge batteries, super capacitors, regular capacitors, have a cap dump mechanism. So because we're isolated here, yes, I have the potential to self-loop it if I would want to do that. I've demonstrated that in other videos, so my point today is uh, the reactive stage here, which is a very good alternative, is very friendly as long as your power supply is a traditional magnetic transformer, no switching, because the switching power supply will screw up the uh, reactive stage because it's going to try and give it a load and it's going to... Uh, turn on and turn off. The, the, the switching causes havoc. So now I disconnected it here by mistake. But you see how the, the Bedini motor speeds up. See I got it off now. When I plug it in, it speeds right up. So typical Bedini stuff again we can run it does run certain things like lamps Bedini did say that LEDs will run fine so maybe lighting solution Bedini did this kind of thing apparently you know for lighting as well but no big secret there so I hope you enjoy just using reactive power here off an inverter the smaller the inverter, the better it is, because you don't want to use too much input just on idling here. So until next time, folks, and have yourselves all a great day.